So let's now switch to uh, operating system structures. Okay, so now we will take, a, in this chapter, we'll take a look at the inside of an operating system and how it's structured. But in fact, before we take a, a look at the inside, we will uh, look into greater details into the different services that an operating system provides. So here we have this operating system sitting on top of this hardware and standing between the hardware and the user. And between the uh, user programs and the hardware, so these are the services that the operating system does. So it does program execution, I.O., file systems, uh, process communication, resource allocation, uh, accounting, uh, keeping track of resource usage. We will talk in greater detail about these later. We'll, take, we'll, we'll talk about them in more details later in this, uh, in this chapter, but many of them will be covered in great detail uh, in, the, in the corresponding chapters. Uh, error detection and protection and security. Now, how do the point is, how do user programs access these services via system calls? So you have that system call, you, you, uh, a user program will issue a system call to access a certain operating system uh, service. Okay. So, so these services include, you know, user interface. So, uh, you know, we are all familiar with graphical user interfaces and command line interfaces. Um, you know, for uh, for younger people, the, the graphical user interface is the norm, is the, the, the user interface that they are familiar with. But for old people like me, when I started using computers, they did not have graphical user interfaces, the, the computers that I used early in, in my career. And I started using computers when I was in college. I, you know, I did not have access to computers when I was a kid. But I started using computers in college, and what we had is a, a VAX system with a command line interface. Now, here we assume that you are familiar with command line, with the command line, and with the, with the scripting uh, in CSC uh, 60. So CSC 60 is a prerequisite for this course, and we assume that you are familiar with the command line and you can, you're comfortable uh, using the command line interface and doing some scripting as well. Uh, program execution it is one of the main functionalities of an operating system. So when you click on an icon that, uh, for a, a certain application, when you click on that icon, you are basically asking the operating system to execute that program. Mm -hmm. Or on the command line, you just type that program name and hit enter. And by typing that program name and hitting enter, you are saying, you are asking the operating system to execute that program. Uh, IO operations are controlled and are implemented by operating systems, and access to the IO devices is limited uh, to the operating system. Only the operating system can access our IO devices. And what's the purpose of this? So what do you think? What's the point in uh, you know, limiting access to the operating systems to the access to IO devices to the operating system and uh, not allowing user programs to access IO devices directly? But yes? ECI implementation for application. What's that? Uh, so you the application will be easier to write, to implement. OK, so that's a good point. That's one good reason for uh, 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 for not allowing user programs to access I.O. devices, to hide the details of the I.O. devices from the application program. So the I.O., when, a, when an application program needs to read from the keyboard, the application program doesn't have to know about the specific details of that particular uh, I.O. device. It will just say read, and the operating system will, imp will handle all the low-level details, all the, hard, all the hardware details, uh, the details of the specific hardware will be handled by the operating system. So that's one good reason. But there is another good reason for yeah To divide access between um, processes that may need to use IO. 
Yes, so it, to manage that access and to uh, resolve conflicts, right? If we allow, if we allow user programs to access I/O devices directly, then there will be lots of conflicts. What if two processes are trying to access the same I/O device at the, the same time? Then there will be conflicts. They may be overwriting each other, and so if we go through the operating system, the operating system is going to manage this and it will resolve. Uh, conflicts and it will, uh, in a way that will ensure uh, correct functionality. Isn't that just an implementation detail? What's that? Um, the fact that the OS is the manager as opposed to implementing some kind of management in the actual device itself. No, no. It's this is a policy. It's a policy of uh, of giving control to the operating system, you know, keeping the operating system in control and allowing the operating system to uh, resolve conflicts uh, because otherwise uh, uh, application programs will be creating lots of conflicts, will be conflicting with each other when they are trying to access the devices. So it's a policy. It's, it's, it's a very important policy that will keep the operating system in control and will ensure that the system will function correctly. <coughs> Uh, okay, so I think well, we have a couple of minutes, so let's go. So the different services that operating systems implement, and you know, including file system manipulation, again we'll discuss this in detail later, uh, communications, process communication, we will be uh, studying different methods for inter-process communication, including shared memory and uh, message passing. Uh, shared memory will be studied in detail and we will be using it in assignment number one. So assignment number one will involve shared memory access and we will be doing that through the operating system. And message passing will be left for the networking class. Uh, error detection, it's very important for the operating system to, uh, uh, to be aware of all the errors that may occur in the system, whether they are, whether they are user errors or hardware errors, uh, the, or device errors. The operating system should be aware of these and should take the right action when an error occurs. Resource allocation, accounting, keeping track of how much uh, of each resource a process has used, especially the CPU, and we will see this in uh, CPU scheduling.